As you know that in one of my previous videos I have mentioned that when we deploy Windows 10 through SCCM and it shows just a moment screen for a while and in this video we are going to look at how to fix this issue or fix this problem or how to overcome this scenario and uh, I have tried 1809 and even I have tried 1903 and this issue still exists. Hi everyone this is Jay Singh welcome to my channel Technic Solutions and uh, before we start let's have a look at uh, what are we going to do in this video so first of all we will look at install.vim file and then we will create uh, answer file with the help of Windows System Image Manager and then with the answer file we will create a package and we will add that package to a task sequence and then we will deploy Windows 10 with that task sequence and we will look at the results afterwards. Alright so I have logged on to technex-sco1 which is my SCCM server and uh, on that I have actually created a folder on the desktop and named it answer file. If I double click on that you can see I have install.vim file in it and if I right click and go to properties of this install.vim file you can see that in attributes read only is unchecked because by default on install.vim it was checked and uh, I had to uncheck it and I clicked on apply and clicked on OK. So which means our install.vim file is ready and to get that file I left a link for you in the description of this video. You can download Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation and in that ISO file if you click on um, the sources folder inside sources folder you will find install.vim however if you download a standard windows 10 from microsoft you would not be able to find install.vim in sources folder however you will find install.est um, which is a compressed version of install.vim and you'll be able to export or you'll be able to extract install.vim file out of that but you have to follow a different procedure however I'm keeping th uh, things simple and this is why I have used uh, Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation okay so once our install.vim file is ready the next step is uh, to use our Windows System Image Manager to create an answer file so Windows System Image Manager it is part of uh, Windows ADK in general so if I go to start menu because on this server I have actually installed or we have actually installed um, ADK so it is installed so on the start menu in the installed apps uh, in the menu if you go to Windows Kits and in Windows Kits you will find Windows System Image Manager so I put it here on the start menu so if I open that um, so it says uh, SIM01 is not a valid distribution share I can ignore that I will click on OK so when you open uh, Windows System Image Manager, it might prompt you to select uh, install.vim or a catalog file. So we will click on No. I will put here, nice and tidy. And in distribution share, you might see a default distribution share, which is fine. You can use that. Or you can create a new distribution share. Uh, within distribution share workspace, if you right click and click on Create New Distribution Share, and you can pick a location it can be any location so in my case I will go to local disk C which is the Windows Drive and in here I will create a new folder I can name it WSIM and um, you will open that and this is my distribution share so if I click on uh, extend button here you can see different folders alright so our next step is to import our install.vim file or you can um, import a catalog file as well um, so I don't have a catalog file so I will import install.vim and Windows System Image Manager it will generate catalog file on the ba on the basis of that install.vim file so in Windows Image Workspace I will right click and uh, select the Windows Image and then I will select install.vim which is in the answer file folder on the desktop and I will click on open and uh, it will prompt us that it would like to create a new catalog file I will say yes and then we will see UAC and we will uh, say yes to that as well so say yes and now it will generate a catalog file it can take um, one to two minutes and I will be back once this is ready okay so now our catalog file is ready and if we go back to our answer file folder where we have install.vim you will find a new file there 
which is a catalog file okay so i'll minimize this one uh, let's go back to our window system image manager so in window system image manager our next step is to create a new answer file so we will click on answer file uh, workspace and right click and click on uh, new answer file so you can see different components here but nothing is populated yet so to populate anything in answer file we have to uh, actually go back to Windows image here in this workspace and uh, extend components to overcome our um, problem we will go to Microsoft Windows shell setup you have to scroll it down and find uh, Microsoft Windows shell setup so it is here so extend that on from the plus button and uh, OEM information we can import that to do that we will right click and then add setting to pass for and Apart from this, we will add OOB, which is very important. Right click and uh, add setting to pass 7. So on the, in the answer file, you can see that more information is populated under uh, 4 and under 7 OOB system. Okay, so let's update OEM information. So click on uh, OEM information and uh, manufacturer and model. Um, I'm going to update these two settings. And when we will use this answer file in the task sequence and after our operating system deployment finishes, we will go back and we will have a look at manufacturer and model. And we will see that the information we populate here, it will be updated into our windows. Okay, so I will add these two settings um, now. So I will type in manufacturer and model. Okay, so I updated uh, manufacturer technex and model hyper V VM. So now other important thing is in number seven OOB system and um, click on OOB here. And here we are going to update these settings, uh, hide EULA. So I will say true. So it is going to hide EULA page and um, hide uh, OEM online account, true. And hide wireless uh, setup, true. Network location and um, you can or you can leave it as it is. So I will just populate it work and protect your PC this setting I will say too um, and I will leave a link for you in the description as well if you like to know more about this and basically this means express settings um, skip machine oob I, I will say true and you, with the user oob it's totally up to you you can leave it um, as it is or uh, you can say true okay so now all the settings are up to date uh, what we need for our scenario so now we will save our answer file so click on file here and um, save answer file and I will name it sysprep okay so I'll save that I'll minimize this so it's saved in our answer file folder on the desktop now we have to move this file to a network location so I will copy that and move it over to a network location I will go to this PC and I have a mapped network drive which is applications and uh, in this network drive I will save the file in sysprep folder and right click and I'm going to paste it here so our sysprep file is ready and now our important task is to create a new package so to create a new package we will open um, configuration manager console and in console in the workspace we will click on software library and in applications management extend that and we will go to packages okay so you will see these packages by default and I will right click here and I will create a new folder so I will name it MS tools to keep things nice and tidy you can create different folders and you can add your packages to different folders so in MS tools I will right click and create a new package and I will name it sysprep so you can update um, other information as well if you like which is a good idea if you like to update manufacturer language version so important is this package contains source files and we will browse to our network location okay so I will click on browse and it is backward slash backward slash technex dash dc01 backward slash applications and I will select sysprep folder okay so in this sysprep folder we have saved our file so anything within that folder will be part of this package so I will select that folder click OK and click next so we do not have to create any program so all we need is files within that package so we will select do not create a program and we will click next and next it is all done so we can close that so our package is ready however the files are not on the distribution point because we have to distribute the content within that package so to do that you can click on sysprep you can right click 
and click on distribute content click next and now in add we will add a distribution point or distribution group so if you have a distribution point group it is good idea to just to deploy or just to distribute the content on distribution point group so I do not have a group I will select distribution point and I will add my distribution point here and click on next and next and close so to check the progress of a distribution we will refresh this page and you will see that here on the right hand side in the details pane uh, we will see in progress it says one okay so it is very small file it doesn't take le that long to distribute the content onto the distribution point and we can refresh that and you will see that it will turn into success in no time however if it's a big file in gigs and it will take uh, a while to do that so it also depends on your um, hardware or your network as well now the next step is to add this package to a task sequence for the purpose of this video I am keeping the same task sequence which I used in one of the previous videos if you would like you can check it out and the link is in the description for that video so that you can have a look at uh, how I created the task sequence and uh, click on the task sequence here under operating systems and I am going to use task sequence 2 okay so right click edit that and sysprep file we are going to add under install operating system in apply operating system okay so here we will click on uh, tick that box use an unattended or sysprep answer file and browse to our package so it sits in MS tools our package is sysprep and click OK and now file name this is very important within that package you can have different sysprep files but the file name you will mention here it is going to use only that file so our file is sysprep.xml so I'm going to put that file name in here okay so I will click on apply and click on OK so once you do that the next step is it's good idea to check the all the references within the task sequence uh, if they are up to date or not so to do that in the details pane we will click on references and you can see that everything which is referenced in this task sequence is targeted so under targeted we can see that everything is one so they have been targeted to the distribution point so which is good and um, other thing we are going to double check is the deployments so make sure this task sequence is deployed to the machine which we are going to use uh, as a test in this video so anything which is unknown is part of this um, ta this deployment and anything within Technex computers is part of uh, this deployment as well okay so if I go back to Technex computers uh, computer collection which is a device collection um, I will have to click in the workspace assets and compliance and then I will go to device collections and you can see that Technex computers is here if I double click on that uh, you can see that PC-03 is part of this collection so for this test I'm going to use PC-03 and I'm going to network boot this PC-03 VM and you will see that uh, network policy or our SCCM policy specifically will show our task sequence there in the list okay so to do that let's get out of SCCM and uh, we will start PC-03 and uh, we should see the task sequence in the available task sequences list so right click and go to settings and make sure that in settings um, in firmware so network adapter is the first one to boot from okay and also you can create a fresh VM as well if you like and I will click on OK so make sure network adapter is at the top I will click on OK and I will start this virtual machine and start so it's starting PXE over IPv4 hit enter so that it get the boot file so as you can see that it is loading boot dot tech double zero double zero five dot vim so this is a vim file which is under if you go to software library workspace and in boot images you can see this file would be listed here tek double zero double zero five this boot image so let's just minimize this and um, it is loading that file and once this file is loaded it will show us or it will prompt us to enter the password for PXE 
Okay, so we will enter our password for PXE. Um, to check that out, where we enter this password, make sure you go and uh, check out the video, which is, I left the link for you in the description. For the, It is the same video where I created the task sequence as well. So click next on that one. So now it is retrieving policy for this computer. Okay, so all the task sequences which are deployed to PC-03 or to the device collection which is a PC-03 is part of, uh, they are displayed here. So we will pick task sequence 2 and click on next and now OSD computer name is uh, one of the membership rules which we have added for the device collection. I will double click on that and I will populate that with the PC-03 and I will click on OK. So that's the device name PC-03 and we will click on next. So now task sequence has been started and uh, Windows 10 it's now it is going to deploy Windows 10 to PC-03 and it is gonna take a while and I will be back and we will have a look at um, uh, if it shows uh, the loading screen with the just a moment or not and also we will test the results we will log on to this windows and we will check if uh, uh, our manufacturer and model is populated I will be back So task sequence is installing configuration manager client and uh, once the client is installed Windows should display us with the login screen instead of showing just a moment screen so we will just wait and watch. Alright, so now our Windows is ready and uh, I will log on to this Windows and then we will check the control panel. It should display manufacturer and model number. So I will quickly log on to it now. Okay, so I have logged on to our freshly deployed Windows 10. Now I will open control panel and uh, we will see the changes that we have made in the sysprep file if they get populated in control panel or not. So we will open uh, control panel. Con uh, I will go to control space system. It will load the system properties. Okay, so in system under manufacturer you can see it is Technex and model is Hyper-V virtual machine. So it tells us that it has actually used our sysprep file and uh, so it has populated all this information here. If you feel like this video was informative for you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to show your support. I will see you in the next video.